for me <laughs> but it's the weekend after Christmas and in today's video I'm going to share with you a moisturizer that I really like and I've talked about in other videos before I'm also of course gonna run to Costco because I'm super low on a lot of my staple produce items I also have to go to the bank anyways I wanted to share with you guys a moisturizer that I've talked about in other videos before but uh, Dermatology actually sent this one to me. It's their Soothe and Recovery Cream. Now I used this in the past, it used to be in a pump bottle. It's really nice. It's a fragrance-free moisturizer with ceramides and it also has um, like yeast extract that can help with adding hydration to the skin and smoothing out fine lines and wrinkles. And it's just a very nice basic moisturizer. It has panthenol in it. This would be a really good choice if you are dealing with a lot of irritation, either from topical products like retinoids, or just because it's winter and the heaters are on, you're more prone to skin dryness. I recently finished up that Neutrogena Overnight Hydration Cream, the Hydro Boost Overnight Hydration Cream. I was using it not only on my body, but my face, and I love that two bits. But they sent this to me, and I went ahead and started using it last night, and I adore it. Dermatology, I'm not sponsored by them or affiliated with them, other than I'm on their PR list and they send me stuff, and I really like their products. But Dermatology is a cruelty-free brand, and they make really good products. You guys know I'm a huge fan of their tinted moisturizer, although I didn't put it on this morning. I'm currently wearing the Exuviant's one. Well, I got another bottle of that. So yeah, uh, if you're in the market for a cruelty-free facial moisturizer, I highly recommend this, but do be warned, it has a strange odor. <laughs> a lot of the dermatology products smell on. It's really good. You know, a lot of people will analyze ingredients to death, trying to figure out if it's going to, the product's going to be poor clogging or not. You guys have got to stop doing that. There is really no way to deduce from an ingredient list if a given product is going to cause acne or be, quote, poor clogging. And even the poor, the, the comedogenic testing that manufacturers do on their products is like not useful and that being so that being said even products labeled non-comedogenic can still cause irritation and acne like breakouts some products are just really heavy and thick and for some people that can cause a um, kind of irritant reaction or almost like a heat rash like miliaria is it called miliaria rubra and that is not the same thing as acne it's not uh oh <laughs> I feel like I've done that before. <laughs> I just dropped this in my coffee. Fortunately, I had the lid on pretty tight. <laughs> Let's slug down a ceramide. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, as I was saying, it's um not that the product cause acne or anything like that. It's just more of a irritant reaction, which is frustrating to deal with. But uh, you know, don't don't assume that there's a way for you to choose or to be recommended a product 
it's not gonna do that. Uh, there's just really no way to gauge that, unfortunately. The comedogenic testing, it really only evaluates under you know, a very non-real-life scenario. It really only evaluates for formation of open comedones or blackheads. It doesn't look for inflammatory papules or anything like that. So it really isn't looking at acne or, you know, true acne. It's really just kind of this artificial scenario where they, you know, put the product under occlusion. Uh, so it's not, it's not particularly helpful to try and deduce if something's going to clog pores or not. Um, I think that's just way overemphasized amongst internet skincare enthusiasts for sure. Anyways, guys, I just filmed a video for you all on some of the worst skincare advice out there. Um, and so I hope you guys enjoyed that. It should be up already. If it's not, um, stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned for bad advice debunking. <laughs> uh, my tree is still up. I'm gonna leave it up into, the, into January because, you know, uh, epiphany and whatnot but uh, I also just don't wanna take it down because I'm enjoying it. I don't know, like, I like having the lights and I spend a lot of time putting it up. So I just kinda of wanna keep enjoying it. Why not? You guys know I enjoy my Happy Holidays mug all year round. The main reason is that I have, it's so hard for me to find a mug like this size for my coffee drinking. I mean, I have numerous mugs, but they're all, designated for tea because there's too small for my my needs <laughs> well hey guys i am in line at the drive through at the bank um i've decided i think that the atm is fixed so i could actually get out and go to the atm but we have had in this area in particular as of late a lot of crime so i feel like i just would prefer to stay in my car i don't know is crime up in your areas up here for sure or at least you know it's being talked about more um which is kind of a shame anyways i mean obviously it's a shame it's not kind of a shame crime is not not fun um i got a new purse you guys i'm going to show you what it looks like when i get a chance um it's a lug bag i had my prior lug bag i still have it I've had it for like three or four years now. I mean, it's not, these bags, they're not like, you know, high-end design or anything, but it is me, so what do you expect? But the quality is amazing. Like my other one, still perfectly fine. Doesn't, like I held it up side by side to this new one, and aside from just a little bit of a few little scuffs on the side, which could easily be taken out with like, I don't know, some sort of effort, which I'm not gonna put in. Uh, it looks basically brand new, so they hold up really well. And what I like about them is they have a lot of functional pockets, and they have that RFID, I think that's what it's called, um, technology where basically people can't scan your bag and steal your, your credit card information, which by the way, that has happened to me not once, but twice. And so I swear by these RFID, well, I can't even, I don't even know what they're called, bags, because since I got the lug bag, that hasn't happened to me. Um, you know, like they scan, I, I don't know, like these people, they have like some kind of scanner or something, and they scan your bag and they like get some information from your like credit card or whatever, and then they, hack in and steal it. I've had that happen. And it's such a nuisance. I mean, the bank always calls me like right away. It's happened to me twice in my life. The bank calls right away and is like, there are these weird charges on your car and like, that's just not like you. I'm like, yep, that's not me. Thanks. And you know, they put it, they put a halt to it right away. They cancel the car. They refund the money. I mean, it's a huge hassle for you, the individual and the bank, because you know, then you've got to go in, wait for a new card to come, rechain. I mean, it's just a huge pain in the badunk -a -dunk. <laughs> Um, I'm here, like I said, in line at the bank, but I'm going to Costco, of course. And I got a golden ticket, you guys. Uh, you know, most people, a lot of people get excited when they get their tax refund or whatever. I don't, because to me, it's always like, oh, look, this is money that I could have, you know, been getting interest on that the 
government was withholding. Anyways, um, yeah, uh, I instead get excited when my Costco rebate comes in the mail. So a perk of the executive membership and why it's totally worth it. No, I don't work for Costco. I know I'm not sponsored by them, but they should sponsor me because they get a lot of free advertising from my videos. Anyways, uh, with the executive membership, you get a rebate check at the end of the year. It's like a certain percentage off of your total spending for that year. And for me, at least, the rebate always pays for the membership, at least. And this time, it paid for the membership plus a trip to Costco. I got quite a bit back. All right, that is donezo. I braided my hair. It's a new hairstyle I'm trying out because I get sick of wearing my hair pinned up in that, you know, kind of pseudo French twist thing with the claws or the top bun. But if I wear my hair down, that is a nuisance because it's always getting in my face. If I wear it in a ponytail, the ponytail starts getting in my face. So I'm going to try the braided ponytail. <laughs> uh, my son. Right, I hate this. I'm just gonna make a. Actually, do I have to make a U turn? Yeah, I should probably make a U turn. Oh, this person's trying to make a U turn. The people behind me are gonna get annoyed because they wanna keep going. And this person's like out in the middle of the road, so. Whatevs. <laughs> I think instead of making a U-turn, I'm just gonna go down this back street. Back streets, back, alright, everybody. Actually, I'll make a U-turn here. That's what I'll do. Free and clear, boo. Also this week, I filmed a video on cystamine cream for hyperpigmentation melasma, aka Cispera. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. So I was getting a lot of requests to please review that. You know, I don't know. My thing with that product is like, same thing with vitamin C serum. It just, you know, it's a non-drug cosmetic at the end of the day, not suspect, not subject to the same level of like regulation and whatnot. And so, you know, I don't know. It's kind of complicated. Like it just makes, you know, it's $200 and it just makes dermatology seem unattainable to people. And that's what frustrates me. And same thing with the vitamin C serums. Like, okay, like you show some interesting data that's compelling, but we know it's got all these limitations about stability and everything. So there's one, one type that's got a patent on it that's really been shown to be stable and everything that we can trust. It's super expensive, and of course everybody wants an affordable dupe, but in good faith, can you actually recommend an affordable dupe knowing that non-drug cosmetics are not regulated? And so how do you know that you're recommending something that is efficacious? You don't, you know? So as a physician, it's like incredibly frustrating. This is part of dermatology that I detest actually, is, you know, cosmeceuticals. Yes, they can be helpful, but I hate, I hate what it does to patient care ultimately, and that it, it creates an inequality basically, you know? Uh, and, it creates this idea that dermatology is unattainable because not only do you have, first of all, a lot of insurance providers or whatever, you know, they don't necessarily cover dermatology visits. It can be a hassle to get in to see one. I mean, it seems like, it seems easier to get into, you know, that's hard to get into. I don't know. Anyways, it's very hard to get in to see a dermatologist because, you know, we're busy seeing a lot of skin cancer patients and just the nature of the way healthcare is executed. Plus now with a pandemic, it just puts another layer of, of difficulty on, it, it, it creates a, an additional barrier to access. So people already have the idea that like going to see a dermatologist is this like unattainable thing. And then you put in these cosmeceuticals that are non-drug cosmetics 
that are not covered by insurance that are so expensive. Uh, you're paying out of pocket, you're paying a large copay or whatever, and then to be offered something that is that expensive and not covered by insurance, it's like, you know, for the average person, middle class person, whatever, that's just like unattainable, you know? A major criticism that a lot of people will have about, you know, diet advice in the diet industry is that they make it seem like in order to eat healthy and be have a healthy lifestyle you have to like buy all these expensive supplements and have all this expensive workout gear and you know that's a major criticism of the diet industry but you know taking it at face value it's an industry it's not medicine so that's what frustrates me about cosmeceuticals is it really just blurs the line between medicine and profit yeah. all right i made it i'm here in the parking lot or, or parking garage there were plenty of spots let me show you guys my new purse before i go in because it's really cute all right this is what it looks like on the outside and the handle is adjustable so you can make it like crossbody right now i just kind of have that more shoulder baggy <laughs> Um, and then the side is one thing I really like, one feature I really like. It's got this like magnetic adjustable pouch for your phone or a water bottle. It's got, there's a magnet in there and then it snaps closed too. So it'll stay closed when you're not using it. Anyways, I'll snap that later. Um, there's a nice little pouch here, which I, you know, you can just stick like receipts and things in. And then the front pouch. Then you have a front pouch here where you can put like cards. I have my face mask that I'm gonna put on, my sunscreen. Ooh, we're doing a what's in my bag my lip sunscreen and then i have a thing of hand sanitizer i love cinnamon roll he's one of my favorites yeah i got this on yes style but i just refill it with just regular hand sanitizer so yeah that's a little front pouch and then you have a nice magnetic closure here i've got in this pouch my upf 50 gloves and then there's a hook for your, this is really nice actually, for your keys. So you can, it comes with like a key ring. There's a ring in there. And then this unclamps, this unclamps and is basically a key ring for your keys, but I'm not using that. Although I do have my keys down in there. And then in the main stage, <laughs> You have, I like this, you have a clear zip pocket inside. Can you see that? You have a clear zip pocket inside. So you can put stuff in there. And this is my camera pouch. I've got my phone in there and my wallet. This is a Dooney and Burke that I've had for years. I got this before I was vegan. Um, so yeah, I continue to use it. It's leather though. Um, no sense in getting rid of things that are leather. Um, okay, and then you've got a pouch here with like, looks like two little slots for pens. Can you see that? There's a nice depth to it, like my whole hand basically fits in there. Same thing over here, except this pouch doesn't have the pen holder. And then in the back, you have a zipper pouch, which is where my Costco gift card is. So yeah, really love these. They hold up really well. My other one was very similar, but brown. This kind of has like a leaf pattern on it. And I suppose if you wanted to get real fancy, you could even take off the, the strap and put your own strap on. Like if you wanted to do one of those jazzy chains I see people swapping out, you could do that with this bag. So yeah, that's my new purse. I haven't had a new purse in like three or four years. Costco, did you hear me? <gasps> Look you guys, I thought the durian was over, but it's back. 
I'm gonna resist the temptation to stock up. Like, it's okay, <laughs> it'll be here again. There's no asterisk. Whoa, this is new. Uh, I'm definitely going to add to cart. I don't come here for a week and look at all. Look, look what they were doing behind my back, you guys. <gasps> Spicy dried mango, that is new as well. It probably has sugar in it though, added sugar, yeah. And red dye. These are another favorite. I'm just stocking up today on dried fruits. Fruit snacks. Gummy bears. Fruit by the foot. Moon cheese. Everything Parm Crisps. Those are new. I mean, they've had Parm Crisps before, but the Everything flavor is new. These are okay. Have you guys ever had them? They're, they kind of taste like Gardetto's snack mix, which I haven't seen in like a long time. Did they do away with that? Costco got in these adorable Choco Rooms too. You know, I remember when I was a child, um, at one of my violin recitals, his family brought these meringue mushrooms. I just thought they were the coolest thing. Um, they must have taken them forever to make. It's like, um, like a meringue blob with chocolate and then a meringue stem. They look very involved. I have you guys looking at the net. Check this out, the Hometics Total Clean Personal Air Sanitizer. That's good for, like it says, bathrooms in dorms, pet areas. I wonder how well it works in reality. Dirty air in, clean air out. It might help with like mold and stuff. So I made it back from Costco and I just snagged a few items that I thought I would share with you in addition to what I showed you en route. So I got some romaine for salads as well as spinach. I got some Apples, I wanna make my slow cooker applesauce again, love that. I also, as you guys saw, I got this dried pineapple, it looked delicious, and the durian, <laughs> love it. I got some more of my pure layered fruit bars, and I was so excited to see the Catalina Crunch Keto Cereal. It's vegan, of course. I really enjoy this, and it's got like 11 grams of protein and half a cup. So it's just a nice little quick, easy, fast breakfast. Very delicious. And I also got some almond milk. I did not get this, but I got it a few weeks ago, and I highly recommend it. These are great for water. I can't get enough Costco loungewear. They got in these Lucky brand sets that come with a tee and um, a tank and, and shorts and then the the t-shirt pants combo and they're super soft they also had a cute little like blue tie-dye one but i decided to go with the blue stars well hey guys it's time for me to go to sleep i had a nice shower and uh, finished up some work on the computer i'm wearing a new pair of pjs that i got they're the brand Cuddle Duds. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna wrap up the vlog here. I hope you all enjoyed it, and thank you so much for making it to the end. I greatly appreciate it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.